Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is Brianna, aka Hook by Brianna. And in today's video, I'm going to show y'all how to make this sweater, poncho, pullover type situation. If you follow me on my Instagram, you've probably seen it. It is the hooked sweater that I made, which is right here. So I'm going to show y'all how to make one with the hooked and how to make it without the hooked, which is the newest one that I have on right now. Um, I will say that this is pretty beginner friendly or confident beginner more likely because you do need to know a lot of stitches and techniques but I will be showing you everything along the way and I will be providing row counts and measurements if you like those to help you and yeah so hopefully this is an easy tutorial for you to follow I did try really hard I even filmed with my shades on so I wouldn't get a migraine while recording like I did the first time I tried to film this video. I hope y'all enjoy it. And if y'all have any questions, please let me know down below. And I'll try to answer as quickly as I can. Thank y'all so much for tuning in and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let's get right into this video. I used Knitting for Olive's Soft Silk Mohair. My mohair is 225 meters. Three would be enough if you wanna make my size or smaller. But if you want to make it bigger, you'll need about four skeins. And this one is cruelty free, especially with using mohair. It's important that you are using cruelty free because it does actually come from an animal. It's not made like acrylic yarn is. I use a nine millimeter hook, a five millimeter hook, and a four millimeter hook. It's definitely unnecessary. You can get by with just a big hook and a small hook. So let's say five millimeter and nine millimeter. You'll also need some scissors. You'll need some measuring tape. I forgot to mention that you'll need a yarn needle. And if you are making the hook patch, you'll also need two colors of worsted weight yarn. So for my measurements, my arm measurement was about 23 inches long. My waist was about 28 inches. My hip measurement was about 39 inches and I'm about 5'5 five, five to 5'6 five, when it comes to my height. And this website is called Stitch Fiddle and this is what I use to make all of my crochet grafts whenever I make graph gans or whenever I include hooked on any of my garments because I do do that often. So here I have this graph that I made which will also be linked in the description box. You don't have to make this yourself but if you do want to make another word you can also use this platform. It's very simple to use, not sponsored, but if y'all wanna sponsor me, please do because I ride for y'all every time Stitch Fiddle. But you just pick what color you want. You can choose any color, doesn't have to be the ones on the side. And then you just click wherever you want the color to show up, for example. But yeah, that's for if you wanna use the platform. If you want a whole video on that, just let me know and I can also do that because there's a lot of things you can do with this. But anyways, let's get back to how to use it for this sweater specifically. So we see that this row is 49 boxes. So this means that it is 49 half double crochet stitches. That being said, each box represents a half double crochet stitch. Since we do turn our work, the first row, you will be working from right to left. And then for the second row, you'll be working from left to right. And you'll just alternate between going from the left and from the right for the whole entire graph. And you can also keep track of this on Stitch Fiddle by using the progress tracker right here. And then every time you finish that row, you can click the up arrow so you only see the stitches and color changes you have to do whenever you're on that actual row. So yeah, that's just how you use Stitch Fiddle. You don't have to use Stitch Fiddle. You can always just save the picture of the graph. So as you can see on our chart, we have 49 boxes. So that represents 49 half double crochet stitches. So we are all going to make a chain of 51 to account for our turning chain. So you can also just think of this as 49 plus two. So make a total of 49 plus two half double crochets and make sure you try to crochet this pretty tightly so that your graph can look really clean and you don't see the colors showing as much when you're changing colors. So just crochet fairly tightly. 48, 49, 
and then plus two, one, two. And now in the third chain from our hook, let me turn down the brightness so y'all can see it a little better. But in the one, two, three, in the third chain, we're going to place a half double crochet stitch. If you don't know how to do a half double crochet, you yarn over, go into the next stitch, you pull up a loop. Now you should have three loops on your hook. You yarn over again and pull through all three loops on your hook. And you wanna just complete a whole entire row of all white or whatever your primary color is of half double crochet stitches. Because if you look to the chart, if you look at the chart, all of it is just white for the first row. So now we completed our 49 half double crochet stitches. Make sure you count to verify. And then I will also give y'all the measurement of this strip so far. So this measures about 12 inches wide and that's what you wanna aim for if you're making the size that I made mine. But if you want your hook to be a little smaller, try just downgrading to a smaller hook or a smaller weight yarn. But there's only so much you can do to downsize this because this is how much you need to spell out the word hooked, to be honest. So that's the only tip I can give you to make this smaller. And if you want it bigger, use a bigger hook or a bigger weight yarn. So now we're going to move on to row two and we're going to be chaining up one and turning our work. As you can see, the first stitch is white because again, you read the chart from right to left first and then as you flip it, you'll then read it from left to right and you'll just alternate throughout the hooked pattern. So we're going to place a half double crochet into that first stitch, so right here. And then we're going to grab our secondary color. My secondary color will be this blue, just so you can see the contrast well, because I did film this before with the beige, but you can barely tell the difference. So now we're going to color change. And let me undo this stitch so I can show y'all how to color change, if you don't know how to. So you start the half double crochet like usual, but you're not going to finish it off yet. You're gonna leave the three loops on your hook. And then you wanna grab your second color and pull the second color through until you have the blue on your hook or whatever color you're using. And now I'm just going to double knot these two colors. We're not going to cut off the white because we'll be alternating between the blue and the white for the entire hooked pattern or graph. So now I double knotted it. And then you just want to work over this tail and the white tail. And I only have to do two blue stitches until I switch back to white. So I'm just doing my half double crochets over these tails and my working white yarn. So before I finish my second blue, I want to grab my white and finish off the half double crochet with my white because I do need to do white for the next stitch. So you always want to not finish off your secondary color whenever you have white coming up again, if that makes sense. So now I have a total of three whites that I need to do. I just did one, so now I'm going to do another full one. And then on my third, I'm going to switch back to my secondary color. And now I'm going to do my secondary for two more. So one, don't finish this one off. Grab my white, finish it. And then I have three white. So one, two, and three. And then I switch back to my secondary color. We just did our H and now we're moving on to our O. So we're going to do three blue stitches. So one, two, and three blue stitches like so. 
Oh, see, I already made the mistake. I wasn't supposed to finish off that third. I was supposed to finish it off with the white or primary color. And now I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five of my primary. So one, two, three, four. And on our last stitch, we're going to switch back to blue. So basically you just wanna keep reading the chart and making a half double crochet for every box that you see on the chart. So now we are on our second O. This is our H, this is the bottom of our first O. So now our second O will be three of our secondary color as well. So one, two, and three. And then we're gonna switch back to our white. And then we're gonna do white for a total of three primary color stitches. So one, two, and three. Switch back to our secondary. And now we did H, O, O. Now we're on our K. So we're gonna do three of our secondary color. So one, two, and three. And then we're going to switch back to our primary. And then we're going to do two of our primary. Two. And then you wanna switch back to our secondary color for three more stitches. So one, two, and three. And then we're going to switch to our primary for one stitch. So whenever you have one stitch, you just don't finish the one stitch that you're doing and you switch back to your secondary right away. And these can get twisted up. So just keep trying to move it so it doesn't get badly twisted up at least. At least you can still work with it. Of course, at the end down here, I still have some twisting going on, but it's not affecting me at least. But now back to the chart, we're on E now. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five secondary color half double crochets. So one, oops, one, two, three, four, and five. We have one primary color box. So we're gonna immediately switch. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six of our secondary color. So one, two, three, four, untangle, five, and six. And then we're going to do three white or primary color. And you don't have to carry on your secondary. You can just leave it right here and we'll pick it back up whenever we're using it again on the next row. So we'll do one, two, and three. And that should be the end of the row. Now we're going to go up and we have two white. So we're gonna chain up one and then do our two half double crochets. And then we're going to pick up our blue or secondary color. And then I have two blue half double crochets until I switch back. And now we're going back to white. And we're going to do two white half double crochets. And then switch back to blue. And do 
three blues. And then go back to white, do one white, switch back to blue, and we're going to do one, two, three, four, five blues, one. So now I just completed my last white stitch. We're just going to chain up one and fasten off. I'll just do it to about right here. And now your hooked is finally done. And this is what the finished hooked will look like. And now we're going to do the optional mohair border around the hook. So at this point, you can grab whatever mohair you want. It can be the same color as your main body but I like to make mine a different color. But again, this is completely optional. You don't even have to do this at all. But this also just makes it easier to sew it on later so it matches the rest of the sweater. So yeah. You're just going to insert your hook wherever you want. I'm going to insert mine over here. Then you want to get your mohair pull it through this corner and then chain up two and now I'm just going to place about ten along this corner so ten double crochets wherever I can fit them in two three, four, and make sure you try not to get your secondary color in there too. <laughs> you can also just weave, go ahead and weave that in. One, two, three, four, And now we're going to do three in the corners. We already have one. So we're going to place two more double crochets in the same corner. And we're going to just place one in every stitch. So this should be about 47 double crochets. But yeah, this is an optional border, so you don't have to do this. I mainly did this on my first sweater because I wasn't attaching my patch on afterwards. I attached my patch while I was working the front panel up, if that makes sense. But I won't be showing that for this tutorial because it it does look a little sloppy sometimes. And I feel like just sewing the patch on afterwards will make the sweater look a lot cleaner. And it'll be easier to explain because the first time I made this tutorial, I tried to show y'all exactly how I made it, but some things are just hard to explain and show accurately on camera to where y'all won't have a tons of questions, a ton of questions. So this will be slightly different 
than the original sweater, just in the method of attaching the patch on. But it should look the same. I'm just placing one in every stitch along these two edges and on the sides I'm doing a total of 10 well once I get here I'll place three stitches in here and then I'll do nine place three do the rest and then place two more in this corner but I'll come back once I'm at the end of this border so y'all can see what I'm talking about. So now I'm at the end of my hooked border and I'm just gonna show y'all how to finish it off. So like I said before, I'm going to put two more double crochets in this corner. So all corners will have a total of three double crochets in them. And then I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of my chain two that I started off with. And then I just chain one and tie off. You can leave a string long enough to sew around the whole entire border. So I just roughly make one long enough to do so. And then I add about five inches. And then I just pull through and don't try to tie it too tight because this will snap. And now we have the finished hooked patch. And now we can move on to the actual sweater. Now you can put this on anything really. It doesn't have to just be on this pullover. You can literally put it on a pillow, hoodie whatever you want book bag yeah we got you so here i have my original sweater and i'm just going to show you all the measurements that i will be doing for my front panel mine measures about 22 inches wide when laid flat and then the length oops, is about 21 and a half inches long. So that's the measurements that I'm going to make my front panel. So at this point, make sure you know how long and how wide you want your front panel to be. Keep in mind that it's not gonna be sewn on the side, it'll be open. And I just like mine to be super flowy. For your reference, I also included my body measurements. So you can see how my body measurements line up with the measurements of the sweater. So hopefully that helps you with making the sweater for your size as well, especially if you want it yours to fit just like mine. But with that being said, we're going to start on our front panel. So I'm going to make mine about 22 inches wide. The stitch count doesn't really matter. We're working more towards measurements. So let's go ahead and grab our mohair yarn. So I'm going to be using this blue color and it is very lacy, very small. And we are not using the small hook, by the way. I'm going to be using a really big hook. I mean, you don't have to. Your holes will just be smaller and it'll take more rows to reach your desired length and width. But to each their own, I just like mine to be really loose and flowy. But since it's mohair, it'll likely be really flowy anyways. But I'm using this nine millimeter hook for the rest of the tutorial when I'm working with the mohair yarn. So I think I'm going to make about 50 stitches and see where that gets me. So we're just going to make some chains until you reach the width that you want your front panel to be. So I'll come back once I do that for myself. So I just completed 50 chains and my measures about 22 inches long. So that is how long, well, that's how wide I want my front panel to be. So I'm going to add two more chains so I can start my row of double crochets. So I'm going to skip the first two chains like we did with the half double crochet row. And I'm going to place a double crochet. It is kind of hard to work with mohair because it's so thin especially with this big hook. So it may take a couple times to get in there right. There we go. And we're just gonna complete a double crochet. If you don't know how to do a double crochet, you yarn over 
go into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over pull through two loops and yarn over pull through two more loops so you just want to complete an entire row of double crochets until you reach the end of your chain again our chains probably won't be the same length because we all have different tensions that we crochet with or you may be using a different hook size but yeah i will say make sure you try to crochet pretty loosely instead of tightly unless you want to take forever to make it or you just want your stitches to be smaller but I tend to always use a huge hook for my mohair pieces, but that's just me personally. But so y'all don't have to keep seeing me struggle. I'll come back once I finish my row. So now I've reached the end of my row of double crochets. I'm just going to chain up two, one, two, and turn my work. And now I'm going to place a double crochet into this first space. So we're not going into the stitch, but we're just going under the stitch and into the space. This is also a lot easier because mohair yarn is kind of hard to use, especially going into stitches all the time. So going under the stitch makes it so much easier and it also creates this mesh look. So you just want to go into every space for this entire row with a double crochet. So I will come back once I've done that. So now I reach the end of my second row. You want to make sure that you go into this last space or you will lose that stitch. So make sure that you're counting every now and then because honestly, I don't count after every row, just to make sure that you aren't dropping any stitches that you're not supposed to. So here's what my finished row two looks like. And basically you're just gonna repeat row two until you reach the length that you want your front panel to be. So I'm going to grab my sweater again and count how many rows it is, just in case you want to do the same amount of rows instead of the measurements. So I'll go ahead and do that for you. So I have 35 rows for this one, but we can meet back once you reach your desired front panel length and once I meet mine. So yeah, see you soon. So now I just finished making my front panel as long as I want it to be. So now I'm going to start working on the neckline. So I know I want my neckline to be about 13 inches wide. So I'm going to leave a space in the middle of my front panel that is 13 inches. So to do so, let me go ahead and grab my measuring tape so I can see what 13 inches is looking like. And then I wanna find the center of my front panel. So it's looking like I should do 18 double crochets on both sides so I can have this 13 inch or so hole in the middle for my neckline. So that is what I'm gonna do. So we're going to start our next row like usual, but we're only gonna make 18 double crochets in my case and then you just make however many double crochets it takes you to reach your desired neck space neck hole space so i'm going to go ahead and do my 18. so now that we have our 18 stitches we're going to figure out how many stitches is in between this and then the other shoulder part which is what we're working on right now for the neckline so let me count my 18 on this side so I'm going to chain 17 and now I'm going to go into my 18th stitch on this side. It's probably easier to use a stitch marker, but I only use them when I absolutely have to. 17, 18. So I'm going to go into this 18th space with a double crochet. And then I'm going to place a double crochet in each one of the remaining spaces for my row. And I will come back once I get to the end of this row. So now we've reached the end and I already did my chain up two. We're going to turn our work and then we're going to place a double crochet in every stitch like usual for the entire row, including the chain 17 I made or whatever chain amount you made. You'll just go into the chain as if it's your first row. 
So I will show you how to do that once I get to my chain. And then now we're at this space, we already went into it. So I'm gonna go into my first chain. But yeah, I'm just going into the chain. There we go. So yeah, again, I will come back because you at least definitely saw me struggling on those two. I'm just trying to finish this last one before I let you go. All right. I'll be back. So now I've reached the end of this row. And as you can see, we have the neckline right here. And now we're just going to continue doing normal double crochet rows until your back panel is as long as your front panel. So this does count as your first back panel row. So we're going to make, oh, and then this middle part does not count as a row. So for my front panel, this is the first front panel row. And for the back panel, this is the first back panel row. This little half row does not count because this will go on our shoulders. So just count how many rows you have for your front panel. So I need to create 28 more rows for my back panel. And then I will come back once I do that. So now we finish the back panel. I ended up making mine about two rows shorter than my front panel. But that's because I'm planning on wearing it the other direction. So I'm planning on my back panel being my front panel and the front panel being back panel. So I can have a little high low situation. But you can just do equal rows or you can do high low, low high, whatever you want. It depends on your preference. But here are my measurements for it. So let me make it more evenly. So when laid flat, it's about 19 inches long, but it does stretch down a lot whenever I actually have it on. That's why it's important to try this on as you're making it. And then as for the width, it is a little wider than I intended it to be, but I do like how it fits. So I'm okay with that. And this is about 30 inches wide. So that's my measurements for the back panel and front panel when laid flat. Um, so at this point, we're going to start on our sleeves. I'm going to show y'all what a finished sleeve looks like. It looks very short in comparison to the actual cardigan. Well, not cardigan. To the actual sweatshirt. Pullover. I don't even know what this is. Poncho. But we, as you can see, we have ruffles on the end of the sleeve. It does flare out just a little bit, not too much. So yeah, I'm going to teach y'all how to make your own sleeve. Since my front and back panels were so wide, I didn't have to make that many sleeve rows. I had a total of 12 rows, not counting the ruffles. So my sleeve starts right here, but that's because I have so much rows in between my neckline and then the end of my front and back panel. From the neckline to my first row of my sleeve it's about 12 inches so for your reference if you have a shorter distance from your neckline to the end of your front and back panels then you will need to have longer sleeves which means more sleeve rows than i did but if you have a longer section from the neckline to wherever your front and back panel ends then you'll need shorter sleeves or less sleeve rows unless you have longer arms than I do. So that's another reason why it's important to try this on so you know exactly how long you need your sleeves to be. And if you do need to make your sleeves longer, you can just do more regular rows. I'm only doing six regular rows. So if you need longer sleeves, maybe try doing seven or eight regular rows. If you need shorter sleeves, do like five or four regular rows. And you can also refer to my measurements that I had in the beginning of the video if you wanna compare your arm length to my arm length. So now I'm gonna teach y'all how to make the sleeve. So first you wanna grab your hook and you want to find how wide you want to make your sleeves. 
So I didn't make mine super wide because I knew I wanted to flare them out at, at the bottom. So let me just find my neckline row, which is right here. I'm not going to count that as a row. So I'm going to fold it here. And I want to skip eight stitches on my front panel. So we're not counting this row, but we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Insert my hook and count eight on the back side. So not counting this, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and insert my hook right here. So now we're going to grab our yarn and make a slip stitch. So now we're going to make a slip stitch and place the slip stitch on our hook. Now I'm going to chain up two and we're going to start making a double crochet into every space, including this first space. So like usual, we're just going to go into every space and you will notice that every other space is bigger or smaller, but that's just from doing our rows and turning when we were working on the front and back panels. And you can work in the round or you can just chain two and turn like we did for the rest of the pattern. But I find it easier just to work in the round. So it's one less thing I have to sew or weave in later. But it is easier to keep up with your stitch count when you're not working in the round. So just depending on your skill level, you can choose if you wanna work in the round so you don't have to sew later. Or if you want to just work with rows, chain up two and turn, if you wanna ensure that you are doing the correct amount of stitches every row. So now I reached the end and I'm also just going to go into this stitch right here because I am working in the round and I don't want to lose any stitches. Oops. And then I'm going to slip stitch into that chain two I started the row with. And now I'm going to chain two and turn. And that's how you complete a working in the round row. So like I said, I will be working in the round, but if you're not, all you do is you don't slip stitch and then you just chain up two and turn. So it's essentially the same thing. I'm just making it so I don't have to sew my work later. So I'm going to continue doing a in the round rows, well rounds, until I made a total of six. So I will come back after I make a total of six rounds slash rows. So now we finished six regular rows or however many regular rows you did. And we're going to make our first increase row. So we were training up two and turning as usual. But in our first hole, we're going to be placing two double crochets. And then placing one in every other hole, well space until we reach the beginning of the row again. And that's where we'll place another increase. So I will show you that once I get there. And now in our last space, I'm going to place two double crochets. And that is an increase row. If I can finish it, there we go. And then I'm just going to slip stitch into that chain two again because I'm working in the round. Now I'm going to chain up two and turn, and now I'm going to do a regular row. So for the rest of the sleeve, we're gonna do the regular row, then we have another increase, and then I'm ending it off with three more regular rows. And then I will meet you back. So again, regular row, increase, three more regular rows, and then I'll come back and show y'all how to do the ruffle. Now I just finished my last regular row and I'm gonna show y'all how to make the ruffles. 
So I basically just place three double crochets in each hole. Oh, and I also switched to a smaller hook because I like using a smaller hook for my ruffles. So if you were already using a size five, I would say you can just keep using the size five for the ruffle. I'm just switching because I don't think the ruffles look as neat whenever I use the big hook. So I'm just placing four in each space for the entire row. And that's pretty much all you do for the ruffles. So I'll come back once I finish the ruffles because then we're really close to just being done. And now we've reached the end of the ruffle row. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the top of our first chain two like usual and we're going to fasten off. And now we're done with the basic part of the shirt, pullover, sweater. And now we're going to do some finishing touches. So first I'm going to do the neckline. So I'll just grab my smaller hook in my case. You can use your same hook if you were already using a, if you were already using a five millimeter, but I was not like I said before. So I'm just going to attach my yarn with a slip stitch. Then we're going to chain one in every space, not chain one, do one single crochet in every space. So this is what the finished neckline looks like. And now I'm going to go ahead and do ruffles along the border of the top. So I don't know if you can see it all on camera, but basically this is the sleeve. This is the side of the shirt. This is the bottom border. So on my original top, I did ruffles all along everything that's not sewn together. So basically the sides and the bottoms of both panels. But for this one, I'm only going to make ruffles on the bottom. But the ruffles are just like the sleeves, except on the bottom and sides. I only did three double crochets per space just because I wanted it to be less ruffly than the sleeves were. But you can make it the same amount of ruffle. This is just what I did. So yeah, I'll come back after I do the ruffles for my bottom edges of my top. But again, if you want it exactly like the original hooked top, then you also put ruffles where the sleeves aren't, well, where the sides of the shirt aren't connected. So at this point, you can also go ahead and attach your hooked if you chose to make the hooked symbol. So on my original top, it is seven stitches down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rows I meant. So right here, and then you just want to center it as much as you can. I'm not putting hooked on mine, but at this point you would use this string that we left whenever we tie it off, get your yarn needle and just sew it wherever it lands. So I would sew it like here, 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 here around and then the same thing for the bottom so not every stitch on the border will be sewn directly onto the top so like this stitch will get sewn this stitch will get sewn and yeah so you just will go around the whole border with your yarn left from the border so as for the finished touches all that I really did was make a long chain of 75 and then I did single crochets of that chain and tied it in a bow at the bottom edge of my top and I did the same thing to the other side just a 75 long chain and then I tied it in a bow after doing single crochets in each stitch and then I sewed on some beads as well just to add some interestingness to it because I didn't do the hooked on this sweater but yeah that's pretty much it So 
So thank y'all so much for watching this video. I hope your poncho pullover sweater turned out just how you wanted it to. Make sure you share it with me on Instagram. You can email it to me. I just want to see what you made because I love seeing how my tutorials help other people. But I hope you have an amazing day. Happy crocheting and peace.